The most grievous wounds are those that refuse to kill, yet will not heal. Instead, they linger, deepen, and fester. The passage of the years makes little difference, nor does any form of treatment. The wound remains. The afflicted creature is left to suffer in agony, subjected to every kind of pain imaginable, until it can no longer remember a time without it. The Imperium of Man has suffered many such wounds. It is a realm founded in war, and it is war that sustains it. Across the millennia, triumph and tragedy alike have left their mark. Tyranid high fleets have consumed entire star systems. Xenos empires have enslaved untold billions or seized countless more with vile ideologies. Orc warlords smash apart the ancient glories of mankind, while Necron tombs awake beneath them. The Imperium suffers, and the galaxy burns. Yet when the final hour of mankind arrives, and the bell of lost souls on holy terror rings out into the darkness for the last time, the Imperium will have finally succumbed to a wound left over 10,000 years before. The first and the last. Of every threat to assail itself against the crumbling bastions of the Imperium, no single blow has struck deeper or festered longer than the one rent into the soul of mankind by what were once its most favored warriors. They were founded on terror as the 16th Legion, earned their first victories as the Lunar Wolves, were elevated to greater glories as the Sons of Horus, but in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium are feared and hated as the Black Legion. Raised on terror in the final years of the 30th millennium, the 20 Space Marine Legions represented the Emperor's will to end the Unification Wars, strike out from the Solar System, and reunite the lost and scattered domains of humanity. Like its brother legions, the 16th was genetically modified, its warriors implanted with the gene seed of their respective Primarch. Though the ruinous powers of Chaos would scatter the Primarchs across the galaxy, the 16th's included, the relationship between the two could not be severed. Though their Primarch was lost to them, through his gene seed, they nevertheless came to express his unique character, personality, and approach to war. Imperial records of this era remain fragmented, but it is believed that the 16th's first recruits came from the hunter clans of the Jutagran Bowl and the slums of the Samsation subplate. They were said to be ruthless and independent, swift and aggressive. Though earning many battle honors in their early campaigns, none matched the first pacification of Luna. Fortified by gene cultists, whose advanced technology was greatly desired by the Emperor, the 16th made up the vanguard of the Imperium's invasion and were triumphant in a matter of hours. It was the first off-world conquest ever achieved by the Legions, and a desperate plea from the Gene cultists begging the Emperor to call off his wolves would give the 16th Legion its name. The victory on Luna was said to be the first battle of the Great Crusade the enormous campaign initiated by the Emperor to spread the rule of the Imperium across the entire galaxy. Millennia of myths and legends have overwhelmed this era, making any complete, verifiable history impossible. But most every source agrees that Horus, Primarch of the 16th Legion, was the first to be rediscovered. Some accounts claim he was found on the world of Chthonia, having risen to a position of power in much the same way as his brothers. Others dispute this, but whatever the case, it is inarguable that Horus spent many years as the Emperor's only recovered son, and great affinity existed between them. Under the command of Horus, and their ranks swelled by recruits taken from Chthonia, the Lunar Wolves swept across the galaxy. Imbued with various Chthonian warrior customs and the peerless instincts of Horus, the Legion was regarded as inelegant but undeniably effective. As the Great Crusade progressed, the other Space Marine Legions were reunited with their Primarchs. And while their own battle honors would match or even exceed those of the Lunar Wolves, the 16th was always on the forefront of the Crusade, achieving many of its most spectacular and important victories. The eradication of the largest Orc Empire ever recorded was foremost amongst these, and achieved through the strategic brilliance of Horus. So complete was this victory 
that it cemented the Emperor's decision to name Horus Warmaster the Commander-in-Chief of the Imperium's armies. The 16th Legion was renamed the Sons of Horus to mark this appointment and to cement their status as the first amongst equals. The corruption of Horus and his legions to the service of the ruinous powers of Chaos was the result of a long and methodical effort. Hidden Chaos cults, maligned artifacts, and visions of a nightmarish future all played their part, but it was Horus's own bitterness, jealousy, and resentment that made him receptive to the offers of the Dark Gods. He renounced his oath to the Emperor and led his legion into the worship of the ruinous powers. It was a victory of the 16th Legion that ushered the start of the Great Crusade, and it was another victory of the 16th that ended it. On the world of Istvan V, the Sons of Horus, together with the Traitorous Death Guard, Emperor's Children, World Eaters, Alpha Legion, Iron Warriors, and Night Lords Legions massacred the Loyalists mobilized against them. What would be known as the Horus Heresy had begun. The death and destruction unleashed over the course of the Imperium's Civil War was without equal in human history. In a dark reflection of the Great Crusade, the 16th Legion again carved a bloody path across the galaxy, but this time into the heart of the Imperium, towards the throne world of Terra. The siege of the Imperial Palace saw Horus finally confront the Emperor himself, and the outcome of that clash would forever echo throughout the warp. Though few witnessed it directly, Horus' psychic howl of anguish was felt by every warrior in the 16th Legion, announcing their failure and the beginning of the end of the heresy. Amidst the carnage and chaos, the Sons of Horus fled the Soul System, though not before Ezekiel Abaddon, first captain of the Legion, recovered his Primarch's body. While vengeful Imperial War Fleet scoured the remaining traitors from the galaxy, they hid within the Eye of Terror, a portal into the realm of chaos itself, and the one place the Loyalists would never dare enter. Within the Eye, the Legion withered and splintered. Blamed for the failure of the Heresy, the survivors from the other traitor legions launched punitive attacks on the Sons of Horus, until it seemed that the 16th might simply cease to exist. One such attack, however, a raid conducted by the remnants of the Emperor's children, would serve as a rallying call for the desperate legion. Intending to clone a new and greater Warmaster, the Emperor's children stole the body of Horus. Abaddon led the counterattack, which recovered and then destroyed the corpse of their fallen Primarch, symbolically severing them from their past failures. The victory, such as it was, cemented Abaddon as an invigorating force within the Legion, rebuilding its strength and pride. The Legion's armor was painted over the colors of mourning and vengeance, and in doing so, they earned their new name, the Black Legion. In the 10,000 years since the Siege of Terra, the Black Legion has become unrecognizable when compared to the Sons of Horus or Lunar Wolves that preceded it. The strict hierarchy on which the 16th was organized could not survive the death of their Primarch, and the Black Legion is no longer a unified force, but a collection of warbands that have sworn fealty to Abaddon. Many of these groups are the direct evolution of the various chapters, battalions, and companies that formed the 16th Legion which now exist as more independent entities, free to pursue their own desires. Others, however, hold no direct lineage to the Old Legion. Abaddon is clearly favored by the Chaos Gods, and his undeniable power has drawn countless warbands of every kind to his service. The Black Legion is increasingly more of an ideology or dark philosophy than a direct successor to the 16th. This is expressed in the idea of the Long War, a term used to describe the ongoing conflict against the Imperium of Man. To the Black Legion, the Siege of Terra and the Death of Horus was merely the first engagement, and the war has continued throughout all the centuries since. The worship of Chaos Undivided is a central tenet of the Long War. Rather than devoting itself to a single god of Chaos, as some other traitor legions have, the Black Legion venerates them all equally as different expressions of the same universal power. Consequently, the Black Legion has the unique ability to act as a unifying force, accepting warbands devoted to rival Chaos Gods who might otherwise war against one another. Several specialist formations exist across the Black Legion, typically under the direct command of Abaddon. 
The Apothic Blade is composed solely of those veterans adorned in Terminator armor, and forms the personal bodyguard of Abaddon himself. The warband known as the Tormented is made up of those possessed by demons, while those who fail Abaddon in some way might be sentenced to join the Oath Broken and subjected to terrible mutations. The Sarissan Iron Pact, meanwhile, utilizes the greatest number of tanks, land raiders, and assault transports across the Legion, acting as its elite, armored forces. Many other groups have pledged themselves to a single god, while others still worship Horus as a god or reject Abaddon entirely. These latter warbands are known as the Thrice Cursed Traitors and represent the last elements of the old sons of Horus, who refused the new tenets of Abaddon. Maintaining control across such a wild and diverse force is critical to the success of the Legion. While Abaddon shares the same aptitude for diplomacy and carnage that made Horus such an effective warmaster, he has also come to rely on an inner circle to preserve his authority across the greater host. These favored lieutenants are known as the Chosen of Abaddon. Each is granted special purpose across the Black Legion, and each is devoted to a different god of chaos. The Lord Ravager commands the Black Legion's invasion fleets, and is said to always be the first to set foot on a target world. The Lord Ravager is always a devotee of Khorne, the Blood God. The Lord Deceiver is a powerful sorcerer, able to guide the Legion through the fickle currents of the warp, and perhaps even glimpse its possible futures. The Lord Deceiver is always a devotee of Zinch, the Lord of Sorcery and Architect of Fate. The Lord Corruptor instills fear and hatred amongst the Chaos Space Marines of the Black Legion, adorning a trophy rack with the skulls of those who have failed Abaddon. The Lord Corruptor is always a devotee of Nurgle, the Plague God. The Lord Purgator ensures that the conquest or raising of worlds is never left half-finished, and that every soul left alive is dragged away in chains, and every edifice is adorned with the markings of the ruinous powers. The Lord Purgator is always a devotee of Slaanesh. Though the strict hierarchy of the 16th no longer exists, through Abaddon and his Chosen, the Black Legion has maintained a sense of coherence unusual amongst the traitor legions. This is not always apparent, for its various warbands will often act independently and at times even war against each other. It is during the Black Crusades, however, that the Legion again acts as one. Many champions of Chaos have launched their own Black Crusades against the galaxy, but the 13 Black Crusades of Abaddon the Despoiler are without equal. Each has unleashed a tide of carnage across the Imperium, before ultimately retreating back into the Eye of Terror. Though the Imperium considers each Black Crusade to have been defeated, the truth is that collectively they have all progressed a great plan known only to Abaddon himself. But within the triumphs of the 13th Black Crusade, Abaddon the Despoiler's great plan is beginning to reveal itself. Cadia, the great fortress world that for millennia held back the Eye of Terror, has finally been destroyed. Its fall has unleashed a new tide of warp storms, greater than any to have afflicted the galaxy before. The Great Rift, as they are known, have split the Imperium in half and repeated the disasters of Cadia across thousands of other worlds. For millennia, Abaddon has promised to succeed where Horus failed, and his hour might have finally arrived. The Imperium is desperate. For every new wound left by the Black Legion, the first and greatest festers even more. There is a path of blood that leads directly to Holy Terror itself, and Abaddon need only follow it to finally bring about the ultimate victory of Chaos. He has seen his victory in the visions of the warp, seen the Imperial Palace crushed beneath the weight of his armies, and the body of the Emperor cast atop the endless charnel pits, overflowing with the corpses of the species he failed. He has seen the galaxy burn. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 